Good evening, my fellow scientists. It is Monday, July 2nd, 2018. I want to give you an update on this week's progress on an all iron battery. For those of you who are new here, we have been working on developing a battery with an iron anode and an iron salt cathode. We've also been trying to manufacture the separator that goes between those two electrodes. For the separator, we've tried agarose, we've tried Nafion. Nafion is expensive and high performance, and we want something that we can make ourselves, but is nonetheless better than agarose, which turned out to be somewhat lackluster. We centered on a polymer with the property of Nafion that has an immobilized acid group. Since Nafion worked well, we thought maybe we'd try mimicking it to some extent. So we made a hydrogel polymer of acrylamide and acrylic acid, and we tested it in a concentration cell. So it looks like this. On one side of that cell, iron two is going to go to iron three, and on the other side, iron three is going to go to iron two. It is a very low capacity, low voltage cell, but it should let us test how quickly that separator allows the cell to just leak and discharge itself. So we've tried Nafion, we've tried agar. This week we tried the polyacrylamide co-acrylic acid, copolymer. This coming week we're going to try a nanopore polymer with 60 nanometer pores in what I think is a polypropylene membrane. We're going to compare all four, but so far let me go through with you how we made this acrylamide acrylic acid copolymer. So we started with acrylamide and acrylic acid, which are somewhat modestly hazardous chemicals. We then add a radical initiator. You can see that little radical there on that second acrylic acid molecule. That radical propagates across until you have a very long chain of these immobile acrylic acid and acrylamide moieties. That performed somewhat intermediate between the nafion and the agar. So somewhat uh, intuitively, a hydrogel like agar with an immobilized acid group like nafion was about halfway in between. And it, it loses about 0.4 volts per day compared to the 0.2 and 0.8. A little tough given the unevenness of that curve, but we're, we're sort of calling it halfway in between based on, on the range we chose to average. So this leaves me a little bit torn. The acrylamide acrylic acid copolymer isn't something that you want to do in your garage. It involves a radical initiator. We used ammonium persulfate and an uh, organic amide called temid. Uh, these are not things you want to have laying around. Acrylamide is modestly carcinogenic. So this probably isn't garage level chemistry. But on the flip side, I want this to be something that can be made at least as much as possible from scratch, not specialty battery equipment and supplies. So my last gamut for a hobbyist friendly separator, one could make oneself as a paper impregnated with sodium polyacrylate. And that polymer is available as a sort of absorbent for in disposable diapers. It absorbs a lot of weight in water. It's a kind of gel material that's all to the good. It's very cheap, that's good. If it performs as well as our homemade polymer, I think I'm gonna call that the best homebrew option and then suggest that for higher performance we use a professional membrane. Call it good. So until we get our sodium acrylate, we're going to push on making more iron soluble in that solution. We're gonna update you with the progress on the sodium acrylate, the nanopore membrane, and the higher concentrations of iron next week. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate all of your help, especially those of you who kicked into the crowdfunding campaign. Thank you very much to Nico for all of his hard work, and we will see you next week.